Hey guys, Matt Talbert here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have a new painting and I recorded the whole thing from start to finish. So we're going to start out with me doing the underpainting all the way to blocking it in and finishing it up. So it took about eight hours in real life. Um, I think I got it down to around 12 minutes in this video. So I'm just going to talk you through some of the points and my thoughts on it. Probably won't talk the whole time, but you know, when I think of something, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. Um, yeah, so stick around and I hope you enjoy. Right now I'm just laying things in with a mixture of ultramarine blue and uh, transparent red oxide from Blue Ridge Oil Colors. I like to use that combo for just drawing things in. And then I'm using just a standard paper towel to wipe things out. For this painting I wanted to do it relatively quickly, so I just wanted to have the drawing pretty accurately laid in, so I spent some time really measuring and getting all of the shapes in the right spot. And as you can see from how I was blocking things in, I'm really focusing in on the shapes more so than the details. So like shadow shapes and light shapes. And then as I, after I get those in, then I start refining the smaller details. And for something like the eyes, I know that if the like out outer shapes are correct that I can get the eyes in accurately later so I'm not so concerned about drawing the eyes in right away. The majority of my paintings are done with the brush but I thought it'd be interesting to slow down this part where I'm using the palette knife. I wanted you to see how I lay in some texture and putting in some of the thick paint with the palette knife allows me to then work into it and like make an area pop really quickly rather than just using a brush the entire time. I really like how the background looked when I just laid in the green initially. I sort of wish I had just kept it like that and not touched it anymore. I ended up making it really thick and it was almost competing with the figure too much so I had to knock it down and I'm happy with how it turned out but I sort of wish I had just left it alone in the first place. I've really been having this mentality lately of wanting to do my entire painting as quickly as possible, not so much because I want it to be done quickly, but because I just want it to be like one experience and one like moment that I'm trying to capture. So if I can do it in one or two days, I feel like I'm really like in it and it's hard to describe, but it lets me problem solve in a different way than if I'm spending a long time working on a painting. It's sort of like, okay, you have two days, do what you can to make this work quickly. Your mind problem solves in a different way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's been my goal the last like month or so, is doing a painting in a day or two. So I've done about four now that are like, medium sized paintings that are in one to two days. This particular one is only 12 by 16 inches. The other ones I've been doing were more like 18 by 24. I 
You'll see in this video that I tried a lot of different things with these glasses. I didn't keep it the same throughout the whole painting, but I, I just wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. A lot of times with my paintings I'll do crazy colors in the glasses, but I, I just went back and forth on this one. I think to give your painting a lot of like energy in life, the less you do to rework things, the better. As long as you're painting it somewhat accurately to begin with. But like that forehead area, I basically left the same. I didn't really, I think maybe I went back and refined it a tiny bit, but how you're seeing it there is basically how it ended up. Obviously I changed my mind about the glasses, so. It's okay to scrape things out. It almost always makes the painting look a little bit better. Again with the hands just trying to like break it down into shapes and if you measure and get the shapes accurate the object will look like what you're trying to make it look like. I actually really enjoy painting hands. It's hands and faces are probably my favorite things to paint. So I don't think I recorded that part, but I put like some thick textures into the background and it's sort of working, but I end up changing it a little bit to make it not quite so um, distracting. Like you'll see later on, I think I sort of brush it out a little bit to make it not compete as much with the face. One of the reasons I saved the eyes until the end, and I've just done this for a long time, and I, th I think one of the reasons is that if I can make the whole rest of the painting look interesting with no eyes, then I know when I add eyes it's just going to even be that much better. But if I paint the eyes in first, somehow that feels like it would almost be distracting or make the painting seem better than it really is too early on. I don't know. It's just a weird thing that I've always done. So I 
yeah, I try to get the painting looking really good, as, as interesting as I can with no eyes, and then add the eyes and boom, it looks done, and then you can just be like, finished. And the eyes obviously are just gonna make it that much more interesting. I didn't experiment too much on this piece. It was pretty straightforward. Like a lot of times I'll, I'll do a lot more abstract elements or scrape part of the face or different things like that. But on this one, it was on a linen panel so it's not as easy to scrape. So I was just like the mentality of let's just, let's just do this one quickly and straightforward and not, um, not too much experimenting on this one. And also, that's partly because of the composition and the subject matter. It's like, there's sort of a lot going on. I mean, not really, but when you have the hands and the glasses and the face and the eyes, you don't want it to get too confusing. If you just have like a nude figure or, a, or just a straight portrait, it's a lot easier to take it further in terms of abstraction because it's really clear what it is. In the beginning when I first started painting these eyes, she was, it looked like she was looking off to the side but I actually wanted her to look more at you. So you'll see right now how they're painted in and then I have to like adjust as I'm going, keep measuring and like slightly move the eyes over. But it's more than just moving the eyes, it's like how much of the white of the eyes are you showing and it's, it's a lot of subtlety. But if you sort of go back and forth between both of them, it can help you position them right. And I'm measuring the eyes in relation to each other and like the angles and stuff like that. I'm also thinking about the angle of the eyebrows with the angle of the eyes in relation to the angle of the mouth so that they're all sort of going at the same diagonal. So you can just take your brush and like line up what the angle is and just sort of go eyebrows, pupils, mouth, make sure it's all good. And nose, if there's if there was more of the nose showing, I would do it with the nose too. This is a little bit more complicated because she's at sort of a funny angle. important not to make the whites of the eyes too bright. So I always start off darker and then bring them up slowly. It's easier to make them lighter, I think. And same with just like the color in the eye and like the pupil and the highlight. There's no reason to do that right away until you're absolutely sure that it's in the right spot. Now that I'm watching the video, maybe I never really made it look like she was looking at you. It does sort of look like she's looking off to the side. Somehow in my memory, I thought I made it her looking right at you, but I guess it's sort of in between. 
So now just going in and like getting the highlights on the nose and just sort of finishing things up. Um, finally getting that mouth in. That was a little bit tricky because of that weird shadow pattern going right next to her lip. So I had to really just try to focus on the light before I built up the lips. But I think it ended up, ended up working out okay. One thing you might notice is, oh, I totally forgot to do the fingernails. I ended up putting them in later, but that's one thing I forget all the time because I'm so focused on just the overall um, like structure and like form of the thing that a lot of times I'll forget details like things like fingernails. But I did put them in eventually. Yeah, so just building up that, I'm gonna do the highlights on the lips and it's pretty close to finished. I'm happy with how this one turned out. I think it's a fun sort of summertime piece. And I'm happy I was able to get those hands in with that sort of fresh feel without um, overworking them. I think they have a good liveliness to them. Well, I think that's about it. If you want to help out the channel, you could use the Trakel brush referral link below. And just ask me if you have any questions about the painting process. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I look forward to doing more for you soon. I hope everyone has a great and safe summer. Thanks a lot. Bye.